90% of consumers read online reviews before visiting a business. What do people see when they look you up online? We give you the tools you need to take control of your reputation. Send surveys to your customers via text message with Testimonial Collector. Get five-star reviews on all the major platforms like Google, Yelp, and more. Track what people are saying about your business with Reputation Manager. Respond to comments and turn negative reviews into happy customers. See what your competitors' customers are saying about them with Competition Tracker. Learn great marketing tactics and what it takes to stay on top. A bigger social presence means more connections. Automatically generate and schedule engaging social media posts with Social 365. Build trust, boost sales, and grow your business. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to Thursday, another day in the life of an entrepreneur. And do I have another amazing, talented guest? I'm, I'm very appreciative because I work with some of the best PR agents that bring me the best guests. And of course, I always listen to my followers, my subscribers, always wanting certain types of guests. So I work really, really hard on getting these type of guests on the show. So before I introduce who I have today, I always want to give a special thank you to my sponsor, Marketing Out the Box with Sean Maddox, who has been really great and instrumental on getting me out there. I appreciate you so much, as well as BlackProPromotions.com. So you can check them both out. That's MarketingOutTheBox.com or um, BlackProPromotions.com with Sean Maddox. You can go to my website, EntrepreneurLifeShow.com. Click on the link check him out, go find him. And for everybody who is listening on one of your very favorite podcasts, thank you so much. You're amazing. I appreciate you, even though I cannot see you. And those who are watching live, maybe you're watching on Twitch, or maybe you are on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. Chime in if you want, ask some questions, jump in on the super chat on YouTube, subscribe, and um, maybe you can chat with a guest. Maybe he'll answer some questions for you. So who do I have today? So those, you know, I am, I love quality music for those who are like me, who are not necessarily into a lot of today's music. Not that it's all not great. I mean, it's a lot of it that's great, but it's different. There's not a lot of quality to me. There's not a real story, you know, and, and, and don't people don't get mad at me. I mean, not all artists, you know, are like that, but today's music is a little different. And if you really, really enjoy quality music, this is the kind of music that always lives on. And when I bring him on, you're gonna understand what I am talking about because this is the type of music, the lyric that it does not matter how old you are. When you hear good music, you could be 90 and still listening to the same music from when you were 23 because it's good quality music that you understand and new artists keep bringing it back into today's music because why because it's damn good music that's basically it so anyway so let me bring him on today i have saint james singer songwriter r b um he actually is the founder and ceo of household entertainment you know i want to really bring him on to express a lot that he's doing because he's doing a lot um i, I mean if when you meet him and i'm, I'm going to bring up some of the stuff he does the music he has his website I love his music. It, it, it kind of brings me back to like um, baby making music. I don't know. Let me let me not say that. Let me let me not say that. Okay, so let me let me bring him on the show so you guys can see who he is and meet who I really enjoy. I, I mean, I really enjoy. I'm looking at his website right now. Okay, let me bring him on the show. Let me bring him on the show real quick. <laughs> hi, hi, well, hi. Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you for being my guest. What's up, lady? I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on. And uh, that was a great introduction, by the way. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you know what? I meant it. I'm not saying because you are here, because I have done other, I've had other guests and had other interviews with different um, performers, I, you know, from um, Spree from Arrested Development, you know, um, Teddy Riley happens to be, I do some work for him. Okay. And um, just, just some other people on my show. But um, it always comes back to when I listen to music today. I'm in my 50s. This might sound funny, but I have kids in my, their 30s. And they'll hear something and say, oh, mom, have you heard that song? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I was going to the club. <laughs> but that song, like, is not, it's not new, but it's new to them because it's good music. So I, I would first want to start off. I know you're born in Chicago. I did a little research on you. Okay. And if you can just share a little bit about, although you transitioned from Chicago and moved around, how, you know, from growing up in your youth, what was it that inspired you that led you to wanting to make your career choice in music and specifically this genre? Well, first of all, thank you again for having me. Second of all, I'm in my 50s too. <laughs> and I have 30 year old, 30, 30 year old, something year old. You know, they think they know more than we do, like they gave birth yeah. to us. <laughs> so, right, right. But uh, I've been singing since I was about five, maybe uh, in, the, in the late uh, late 60s, early 70s. Uh, my mama put me out in the middle. I grew up in some of the toughest mm -hmm. in, uh, in uh, Chicago, some of the poorest conditions, man. So with that being said, man, it was just like, Everybody was trying to get out the out the out, out the the hood and the project back in the, in the 60s, 70s, man. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, Michael yeah. Jackson Five were real relevant back then, uh, just coming out on the scene. So my mama felt like I was little Michael, so she put me out there with a pit bucket, and I literally was making money singing. So I started at that early of an age uh, loving music. But my grandmother was uh, was the matriarch and gospel singer in the family, and she kind of like would make sure every Sunday you had to be up for Sunday school and go to church. But during the weekdays, we were oldest red and shy lights, temptations. We was getting it yeah. in, barbecuing and, you know, cooking out and stuff. It's the same thing, you know. So, yeah, but every but from that point forward, I got bit smitten and bitten by the music bug. And uh, and I all through school, grade school and uh, high school, I did music. And, and uh, the rest is history. After I joined the military at 18, Straight to uh, the army right out of high school and and from that point forward i started singing and uh got in the group and the next thing you know I'm, I'm i'm in the industry trying to get a record deal like everybody else used to try to do a lot of so i i know that you're an independent artist and why i bring that up is you know now today a lot of stuff is digital and it was very difficult i mean i you know back in my 20s you know i i paid my way through school i did like you know, I was one of them video girls, but <laughs> I, and I knew different artists, but it was so much more difficult in the industry. And it wasn't always who you knew. You could be extremely talented, right? but it was hard to get into those labels and, and to get your music heard. So now that you're, you're independent, how much freedom does that give you? But also, as well as being able to really display your music, but so much is digital now. Um, you know, I I was I was out there shopping record deals uh, back in the CD days when CDs were real still in the merchandising and the, and the and you were selling units. You know, it was a total different game then. Uh, the digital age has made it a lot more convenient to kind of put stuff out there and like you're building your entrepreneurial life platform and stuff. That you know, the same thing with artists. We have we have independence. We all have autonomy. We have uh, control of our product, but it's a lot harder because you don't have the machine or the major budget to get behind pushing what you do. So you have to organically build one follower at a time. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, it's it's a it's a process of work. But the liberating the, the liberation in it all is that I can do what the heck I want to do when I want to do it. Put out what I want to put out. Nobody's telling me how to look, how to dress, what to say, what not to say. Uh, you know, and that, that could be a good thing and a bad thing, depending on uh, how you, if you're not, if you, if you don't display any balance in your approach. You have to have a balanced approach to this thing because everything matters, you know, overall. It, it ultimately, it, it, some stuff can come back to haunt you if you ever hit a, a top platform mm -hmm. or a major level in your career. Some stuff you might have said as an independent could come back to bite you as a major or if you ever get mainstream. So you got to watch what you say to do. And you got to be prepared for um, 
to not care what people think ultimately, man. You know, so so that's where so the digital age has definitely uh, been a, a, a great uh, situation for independent artists. Uh, but in the end, man, it still go boils down to to the money. How much money you got? How can you promote your brand? Uh, what you can put behind it to continuously build it and enhance it and always polish it and get better. You know, so that's where I'm at with it. So I'm excited about the, the potential of what, what, what's going on with my uh, music and what I'm doing right now. I, I never thought I'd get to this place. Where, you know, and it's to this place, what does that mean to me? It's just a place of uh, traction where people are listening to my music and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting uh, people supporting what I'm doing because this is a grassroots movement that I put together of R and for rhythm and blues. This genre has taken a real hit over the last, few years. you know, a lot of people don't, you know, it's hard to sell R&B. It's like, I use this analogy and it's kind of funny, but you know, you know, we all know that there's drug, the drug in America is really strong, but let's, let's, let's put it in this category, in this, in this mindset. It's like you got every there's different synthetic stuff going on right now, but then there's the old school mushrooms. People still that, that ever did mushrooms. I'm just, I'm just saying nobody's doing mushrooms per se but r&b is like mushrooms to the in the music industry it still gets you where you got to be but it's a it's a throwback kind of thing so i i hate the fact that people are looking at r&b as something that's not super relevant but that but all you hear rappers doing right now is singing yes and all you need is that one hook and they keep saying that hook over and over and over again over and over again and you're like yeah. okay yeah anyway I digress, but it's just so much going on with the in this in everybody in the but the internet's also created a level of oversaturation. Yeah. Everybody's singing, everybody's a rapper, everybody owns a record label, everybody's a producer, everybody's a, a podcaster or or, or yeah. on the platform. You know, and you just yeah. gotta sift through it like anything else. But I'm excited, man. I appreciate you again having me on the show. So in the beginning, as I was saying, you know, it's it, there's a there's a difference in quality music because you see a lot of one hit wonders or they're in for right now and then they're gone because it's just that hook or it's because of beat and that's it. And so to be able to stay in the game for so many years, it seems that people continually go back because I hear it in music today, reusing and sampling music from the 80s and the 90s like so often. Right. Just telling you that people are still in need of that quality music. There's no storyline anymore. Mm -hmm. I agree. So how ch I would say I, I can see that that could be very challenging, but how do you think that it has changed the, hey, Stone, I'm sorry. Hi, there's Stone Paxton from, um, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're aware of Stone, but from the original Stone City Band. Um, oh, he's a great, great guy what's coming out with some great music. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. What up, what's up, Stone? And so um, so music has has really changed today, but if there's anything that you can give an insight to artists coming up because they're and, and managing themselves and being able to stay in the game because you've been in it so long, um, they seem to be looking for the likes, the followers right. versus trying to stay in the industry for so long. You know, is there anything that you would advise? And like, you know, if some people just want money, then money's gone tomorrow. Right, right. Well, I, well it depends on what you do it for. If you're doing this for the love of the art and the love of music, then you do it. You would do it for free. And a lot of us have done it for free to get to any level of compensation in the, in the end. So uh, I guess I guess uh, they would have to search their, their true motive. A lot of us as, as, as human beings, we have a tough time introspecting and also being uh, transparent with our own motives and, and desires. So, you got to search your soul. Why are you doing this music? Are you doing it for the fame? Are you doing it for, for the ladies, for the for the guys, for the for the for the validation, for the likes, and all of that? Or are you doing it because you simply have the talent, the desire, and you care about music? I do this strictly for the love of the art. You know, um, I've done it for free. I've, I've struggled. I've been homeless over it. I've lost opportunities, relationships because of my dream and chasing this music all my life since I was in my early twenties, and you know, and I've walked away from it for over seven years because of the roller coaster volatility of the industry, up and down, in and out, hopes and dreams, letdowns, heartbreaks, joys, and, 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 and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, just a lot of, a lot of stuff this industry puts you through when you don't understand the business side of it. And a lot of artists don't understand that music is not just music, it's called the music business. 
they need to call it the business of music instead of music. <laughs> because it's the business is the most important thing. The music, yeah, we know without the music's the product. But the product means nothing if it doesn't have a foundation of great, great business behind the product. product without your business being handled. So a lot of these artists aren't handling their business because they're too busy consuming with the music. And that's usually when you're younger. The younger artists are focused on the art and not the business. And then they, but they end up finding themselves heartbroken on when the, when it's, once the music is done because the business is not handled. Now they got to figure out how to marry the two together. And they usually do it backwards. And that's because a lot of people that's that's keeping the gates and the doorways into the mainstream industry is not willing to share the information that can change these people's lives. And so I, as an independent, that's what I do. I, I, I give away gems and information that most people would be monetizing or doing master classes for because I because nobody helped me when I was growing up as an independent young artist, and it was always holding on to information that could help me. If I wasn't willing to pay for it, I don't. I don't think that's a fair to do to people out here. Because a lot of stuff is free information; it's public domain. To help help people share. And I benefit more because I've been a blessing to people than I would if I was trying to charge them for something that I got for free. Do you think it's harder to protect me protect your music now because then because it's so mainstream and digital and um, and all of its content? Then you know. Um, then of course, when you have to go out and you have to go and put it through management and a, and a record label, and who's going to listen to it? And, and I, I, excuse me, I think um, I think there's only a couple. You guys got to do the basic due diligence, man. You just got to copyright your stuff and red title, register the title and your song with uh, your performance rights organization, BMI, CSAC, ASCAP, and go to the Library of Congress, uh, eco.gov. You can get up to you can if you don't know this, I'm giving the, I'm giving gems today. On the electronic copyright office uh website, eco.gov, if you are unpublished, if you're an unpublished a writer, songwriter, or artist, and you upload 10 of your unpublished works, you can pay it for one price instead of paying one price per song. You can do up to 10 songs for the same price, which is like 80 bucks or something like that. And that protects 10 of your 10 of your songs, whether that's whether that's lyrics, whether that's a sound recording. So most of the time you go in the studio and do the demo versions of your songs just to copyright the initial idea. You can upload the MP3 to the Library of Congress. That's how they do it. You don't do the old um, I, 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 IR forms or or the, the, the forms you used to have to do all the forms and stuff. A lot of that. But now it's, it's simplified. So those two basic steps and then registering your stuff with sound exchange for your digital stuff is the only major things you need to do to be able to protect your music. And then let's be clear. If you go online and you, you have a digital timestamp of your idea, that's another way you copyright, believe it or not. Like when you go in, if you're in the studio working on something and you video and you show it on your Instagram live or your Facebook live, you can go back and show that time date that, that you initially came up with your intellectual property because it's intellectual property at that point. Once you finish it or you're working on it in the middle of it and somebody says, what well, takes your idea, you can go back and show when you actually first created this intellectually. They have to, you, that's your proof. So that, that so it doesn't matter if you if people are trying to take your ideas, if you're showing it prematurely, you're, you're actually protecting yourself digitally because you can show that on this date, I went live on Instagram or I went live on Facebook and I played a sample of my idea. Yeah. Boom, that goes back. If you put that in the court of a uh, civil court, you can show that that was when you initially came up with it, even if you didn't have to be protected under the library con or your performance rights organization. Yeah, that's some knowledge right there. <laughs> that's a, and I don't know about music. So I, I, I want to get to your website. I hope you don't yeah. mind me sharing it because uh, that's. That's why I went and I, and I saw it was called um, Gentle. Um, I was looking at the video. I actually shared the video. I thought, I, I love your videos. Um, <laughs> but um, Gentle, and so, which I love, love, yes. love. But I know you're coming out with a lot, but I wanted to ask with, I'm, I'm assuming that you're engineering, writing, doing it all yourself. Mm. And just that specific song. Where are you getting the inspiration or because it seems like it's very personal? Yeah, you know, <laughs> the, the Being Gentle song specifically off the Throwback the Covers EP, obviously I took six cover songs, 
that are popular. You know, they're already hit records before I even touch them again. Uh, I just wanted to make sure if I was going to reimagine those songs and remix them or re remake them, uh, that I did them justice. So that was the first step. But most importantly, the being gentle song was a, a very favorite of mine growing up. And when slow, when the uh, house parties used to be real big deal, yeah, you could slow dance with the girl. You yeah. know, yeah. the whole night, you know, like oh, I want to dance. Would you like to dance? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I missed those days man, where we could really engage and, and it was okay. You had a good time and you could go home. It was just cool. Um, but that song was one of my favorites growing up as a kid, I, a young kid. I remember that song called, it was called Gentle Calling Your Name by Frederick. Mm -hmm. And so I told myself when I got old enough, I was going to remake that song. And what's crazy about that record, my brother knew the original writer and composer, Jerry Mims. And I called Jerry up and we spoke and it was great to meet him. And man, he said, I said, listen, I want to remake this song. What do you think? He said, go ahead and do, your, do what you got to do. Let me hear it and I'll let you know how to proceed. Because normally if you're remaking a song or, or doing a derivative of a remake, which is when you change some stuff, but you mm -hmm. keep the melody idea. And, and mm -hmm. like he gave me carte blanche on the record to do what I wanted to do. And we just took it there. Next thing I know, he gave me 50% publishing rights to my version. So the Being Gentle song, as it is my, that I did, is now 50% of mine. I own half of that record. Oh, wow. Wow. That's incredible. That's, the music industry. Yeah. Everybody does that. If, if there was an artist that you could work with today, mm -hmm. living or deceased, that you could collab with, who would that be? Have you thought of that? You know, I think I think I think I got asked that question before. Uh, I've got to go with uh, James Brown, man. <laughs> a lot of people say James Brown or Michael Jackson. I'm going back to James, man, because I just 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 some of that funk, man, and some of that music, boy, and the vocals. James was listen before James started going, wow, all the screaming and the I feel, you know, before he started doing that, James. Yeah. James was a bad boy on the vocals. He could sing his tail off. And so to me, you, there's no funk, there's no soul without James Brown. So I've got, I've got to start with him. And of course, there's some other ones, others I would love to uh, particularly work with. Michael Jackson, of course, who wouldn't want to work with Mike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but if currently living, I'm with uh, Bruno Mars and Alicia. Uh, yeah. Because I, they, they, and Bruno Mars still, I think he has a lot of the, a lot still of the R and P R and B kind of classic rhythmic kind of music. So yeah, um, okay. <laughs> so, so let's talk about like um, artists. Okay. So I'm gonna assume because you're independently, are you seeking new artists? Because I noticed that actually you have a couple of artists that you're working with. So I'm assume that they're your artists. Mm -hmm. And if we can kind of talk about them, because aside from you, of course, music on your own helping mm -hmm. others, like you said, in your mentoring and mm -hmm. helping artists themselves and bringing out your own artists. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I have, uh, I have a, I'm, I'm independent, but I'm not doing record deals or contracts. I'm doing partnerships. Half, okay. of, half of the people I'm dealing with are already independently doing their own things, but you know, you can, you know, you can do better more with a team and you can yeah. do better when yeah. you got a, a, a consorted effort of, uh, of interest with people coming together to collaborate and make a product. So, what I try to do is bring artists in. So I'm definitely looking to work with uh, artists that want to polish up some stuff from, from, from the music. To the music. Uh, I did some stuff with some with a couple of uh, former major artists. I worked. I did a, about three records on Maxine Jones from In Vogue. Uh, I did a record with Glenn Jones. So, I mean, I'm ready to work with a, a lot of throwback R&B artists that need a hit record or need to be read a revitalization song. Come, come see me at Household Name Entertainment. I'm telling you right now, I'm sitting on a, on a serious situation best music engineers in the game my engineer is like vocals uh, uh from our mixes that's why my stuff is so industry polished because i got an engineer that hears what i need him to hear all my ideas come to life because he makes sure they sound right when they're finished that's the biggest deal a lot of artists got great ideas great music but the engineer the the, the, the mixing stuff the part the, the sonic stuff has to be industry standards so in the now, are you then also just writing for others, or are you doing everything? Um, yeah, well, well, I write. I'm the uh, executive of most of everything you you heard. You will hear coming out of my camp. Uh, you know, but I don't take credit for everything. I, I share the, the credit with everything, and that's my team. 
my engineer, uh, Brian Porter, my producer, Ivan Johnson. I work with other producers. I'll get beats and tracks from certain people. But then I like to take the elements they may have given me a shell of a record. And then I'll say, okay, it needs a live bass here. It needs a guitar here. So I'll find the best guitar, the best bass musician like Motown, like Barry Gordy used to do. Barry Gordy didn't sit around and produce every song and take credit for all of the music. He took credit for what he's supposed to, which is the executive. He ran the label, he's the CEO, and he also was a producer himself. So I produce a lot of records without touching some of the music, but I do know how to put it together and arrange and sing and write. And that's what I do. And I bring my team together and we do Motown. We, we vet the record. If you're down to your last dime, will you buy this record or a sandwich? And if the record's hot, we gonna we gonna we gonna listen to the record. If if the record ain't that good, we are gonna eat. <laughs> so that's. <kind> of <laughs> so so is it um so are you taking artists from all over or are you accepting from it doesn't matter just in like you know California, LA, Chicago doesn't matter. Uh, I'm all I'm global. I want to be international uh, relationships. I think the international community, global community of music is it, it transcends a, a, a region and a geographical area. I think music is universal, as they say. So for me, I, I work with international artists. I'm currently working with some international stuff. Uh, there's a the organization, if I can if I can say so, it's called the Music Marvel Competition. I'm uh, actually vice president of the Music Marvel co uh, co organization, and we are a, a global organization where we focus on the independent artists and talent competition called the music marvel uh, competition so if you guys are familiar with that check it out on instagram um we're building up platforms for international artists and in all over the world so that's that's so i'm really I'm, I'm actually getting ready to produce a couple of international artists from south africa and india so i actually i remember seeing this one right i was i was listening to her and saw you in the background <laughs> Beautiful boy. So, is this one of your artists? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's Rena Lynn. I did. It. She's a Filipino American young lady living in San Jose, San Jose, California. Just had a baby and uh, just newly met, newly wed. And uh, we did this record called "Suck It Up" because while she was pregnant, she was like nine months pregnant when we shot the video. Because we was like, I was like, how am we gonna do the video? And I said, okay, she's pregnant, so let's use the concept of her being pregnant. <laughs> so a man gotta suck it up when a woman going through the nine months. <laughs> so I. So well. I'm part Filipino myself is probably why I connected so well. Okay. So, so did you write this? Yes, her and I together. Did, do you mind if I just play a little of different stuff for people to hear? Do you have a problem with that? Help yourself. That's what it's there for. <laughs> okay, let's pick a few things because not because you're here because I really enjoy your music, and I think that people also need to hear it, not just. And and, and the interview was great. Don't get me wrong, but. <laughs> Um, the first, I think people really need to, to hear some of the music if they haven't, hear bits and pieces of what you actually do. Okay, that's what's up. So let's, so for you guys, we're going to play a little bit of this first one here. And um, this is Suck It Up. Um, and of course, it's, it's Raina Lynn, right? Yeah, Raina Lynn, yeah. And for those who are watching live, you can actually see the video. <laughs> I love that right there. That's <laughs> good. you've been acting so strange. I've been wondering what you're thinking about, baby. I guess you ain't got nothing to say. I hate we don't communicate. I love that. A little time and space away. Just say it's alright. And you stay here, baby. Tell me, tell me before I go. Cause you know I really need me. Suck it up. Suck it up. Feel up. If you need a drink, it ain't just an extra. you feeling no it it really does. 
I listened to that so many times. <laughs> really? And so is that her also doing the back vocal? Yes, we yeah, it's her backgrounds, uh, you know, and uh you know, I produced the song. This was initially a Maggie Jones from Involved record. It didn't work out, so I put it. Rena, Rena helped me co-write it, and uh, so that record doing really well. It kind of came out of nowhere. Recently, I just found out it's number fifty-two on the top one hundred and fifty global in the records in the, in the world right now, and out of nowhere. So I'm excited about that song. So yeah, that, that I don't know. It's, you know, that is a kind. That's why I say that's the kind of music that makes you. Uh, I, I, it's, it's the, how do you say it's the way, the feel, it's, it's the, how the flow goes is it'll make you want to cry music. Right. Make you want to tell somebody you love them and you want to marry them <laughs> and, or, you know, or right. just you hate them and you want to kill them because it's, right. you know, it's like, it, 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 it's just the feeling of the music. So I just, I just had to play that because I, I love that music. Thank you, thank you so much. And I love that. I specifically love that song. Thank and then, you. of course, there's one that I had shared with the young, but I didn't see it on here. I actually kind of stopped you a little bit and went to YouTube. Okay. And I shared it, but I didn't see it on your site. Which one? But, um, what is that again? Which song? She has, um, what is that? I had just shared it on one of the, um, one of my, my is shares. It being, is it being gentle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just wasn't there. Scroll down, scroll down. Uh, it's all the way down, all the way down. All the way down, all the way down. You gotta go down all the way down. I moved some things around here, Reese. I'm actually updating and trying to keep this. There yes, it is. Yes, here it is. That's the one I share. I was like, yeah. Let me. Okay. I, I, I'm sorry. I just want to share. Just, just listen a no, little bit. Hey, do so you this, say it's your show. Do what you I share it on social media, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. I, I like this. Okay, so you guys, I'm gonna stay with the interview. Trust me, but you really have to. <laughs> The, the music, I mean, it just really, it, it makes you feel something. I mean, a lot of music today, you dance and you don't at the club, I'm like, okay. But this music, you just continue to take with you. So I just want to play a little bit of it, you guys, just a little bit so you can hear it. That your body needs attention And I don't want to take away from your body's perfections Right? Being too rough It's not enough to just be gentle So don't want to make it hard Cause it's all way too simple Oh yeah. I understand that you're Body needs attention, and I wanna take away all your body's impression. But don't be too rough. I love it, touch it, soft and gentle. Don't wanna make it hard, cause it's always oh, too simple, baby. I'm not gonna stop loving you, girl. So don't you ever stop. Times I've heard it in the studio. I keep it's my record. I still oh, listen to it like I like I'm listening to somebody else and not me. It's it's just that melody. That song will always go down as one of the baddest R and B records ever made. Oh my goodness! I mean, you put some 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 <laughs> on that song. <laughs> that is lovely. I mean, 
I just I just want people to hear what I hear. And so, you know, it, it's hard to find music that's emotional. Right. Right. And it, it's been lost. It's been lost in today's music. And you just, you know, not all, I don't want people to come and attack me on my podcast, right. but the majority of music, you just, there's no feeling anymore. You sing it and then you're, you're done. Right. You know, I'm it doesn't resonate. It doesn't resonate. I'm, I'm not, I'm with you all the way. And you know, this song's right specifically independently was the number one independent. I, I hit the number one on the indie soul charts uh, back in September. Uh, it's got over 1.15 million streams and uh, it's doing extreme. It's still on playing all over ra certain radio stations. I'm a, I'm a maybe a major budget away from a billboard smash right here. I, it's still, it's still independent. So it's a lot of people not even heard this song yet. And I'm trying to push this, to that next level, but it takes a lot of money to get there, man. And I, and I, you know, I'm realistic, so I'm gonna keep on pushing with what I got, and you know, see what happens. And if I never get to that next level with it, so be it. But I'm gonna always do what I love to do, and that's make music. So what? So are you working on with um on? Are you having anything in the project right now that we can be surprised with? So I'm telling people, I'm showing your site because you really, really, really need to follow. You really need to see what he is doing because the music's the shit. I mean, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> really? Hey, I, hey, if you cussing over it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you got me cussing. <laughs> so, I mean, truly, and not because you're here on the show, it's because, I mean, if you've seen my show and the artists that I have on, I specifically, it, I have to, I have to really enjoy enjoy your music. Right, that's what's and um, because I want quality people who are who are the same who enjoy it. Um, but it, it you you do some great you have some great stuff and some some did great you, players and great writing. Thank you so much. Uh, did you get a chance to check out the mama the song for the mothers uh, for Mama's Day? I did not, but I would. You know, I didn't want to be like be rude and be like like I didn't want to hear you talk. So. <laughs> Good. But, Good. Let's do the music. I'm good. Listen, I talk enough. I, I'm ready. I'm ready to check out the music. Let the people hear the music. Let the music speak for real. So yes. So let let's listen a little bit more. So everybody who is listening, you can actually jump in on the live. Just go to the website and click on YouTube, yeah, or go click on Facebook. Com. It'll take you right here, or go to the Instagram page. So Saint James. Let, com, by the way, S A S A I N T J A I M Z Saint James. dot com. And so let's go with for the mamas. So, so, so this is recent. Yes, I put that. That's what mother. Well, I dropped it in April and kind of built it up to a to a, a fever pitch of independence that I could. Um, it's like, you know, Mother's Day this year specifically had more a lot more meaning than most because of the yes. pandemic. A lot of people lost their moms and during the yes. month, during the pandemic this year. So I wanted to put this song out this year specifically. And give it more homage because I think one day a year for moms just ain't enough enough to celebrate the stuff you got to do to put up with, man. And specifically raising young black men, it's real important. So check it out for the. And moms. you're having some some comments by the way on the feed, just to let you know. Okay, I'm checking them out. Thank you, Stone. <laughs> That's what's up. Hey, pray for me, brother. Yo, U54 say we need to be in 1985, so bro. Man, I don't know. All I know is that we're not in 1985. We say 2025, man. What's I, oh, come on, oh, right? Yo, we gonna be late for Monday. Yo, I told you not to touch the numbers. Yo, you're driving. <laughs> Why does that look from that for the mama? That that looks like Back to the Future. That's the concept. Yes. We're going back to we wanna thank you. Taking it back in the day with my was a baby boy living on the south side of Chicago. In the dead homes, Mama was just a young girl trying to make it on her own. I'm letting you know I want to thank you. Out of the way you made a way, I want to thank you. Working long nights and long days, I want to thank you. You raised me right, filled my life with your love. From the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you, Mama. I remember waking up early on Sundays. Oh, the diamond in the back, sunroof top, digging the scene with the gangsta lean. Ooh, 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 ooh. One of my mama's favorite songs. 
nothing could go wrong. Whenever my boys in the morning, I remember the way my mama used to say, Jesus loves you this, I know. She said, hold on to your faith, don't let no one ever change you. And I said, so much so just uh and your vocals are great by the way they are smooth thank you so much a lot going on with with me right now we uh we got a couple three records in on the charts right now independent charts right now that's that the mama song is in the top 20 and urban uh the uh urban influencer top 20 r&b soul uh um, baby come to me that Patty Austin James Ingram remake is now the number two indie soul record in the country in the world, and now and the uh, Suck It Up is gaining steam too. So I'm excited about having independent uh, placements and stuff going on for the independent music right now. So let me tell you, you're you're hot. <laughs> Thank you. You're too. And young. the music is it, it it's hot. It's fire <laughs> because let me tell you, I'm not. I love all kind of music, but this is the kind of music that. I mean, I, it, it, it's very, it, it, it's, um, it, it's emotional, it, it's club music, it's today's music, it's yesterday's music. I mean, it, you, have, you have some good music. Thank good you. and good lyrics, good writing. Thank you. Please share, please share with people in the demographic that you, that you are in. And I'm going, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, the kid, the eight, believe it or not, my demographic is 18 to 27. They are loving this style of music right now. That, so the younger people are actually gravitating towards my sound. When I when I anticipated reaching the older group, I'm going after my age group, 40, 35 and up. And it seems like the younger ones are loving it more than, than, than the support I'm getting from the older people. And they're the one who needs to, this is, their, this is the style. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So for everybody who, of course, is if you are listening and you are not on the live, then, of course, you can watch the video on the replay by simply going into entrepreneurlifeshow.com. You can click on the interview and you can also jump into the chat where you can connect and check out the website, check out the videos, go to YouTube. But if you are watching, let me tell you, you guys is a must to follow. Um, it's a must to get the music and download it. Now we can find all of your music, and I'm sure I saw some that on on Spotify mm. as well as Apple, Google Play, Amazon, Alexa. Yes, um, I'm in a I'm in the process of putting uh, everything together on my official website where they can actually get the music directly from me. I think those platforms are great. They they I, I'm just you know I'm transparent, so I believe that they need to do a better job of compensating the artists. It's a lot of work and a lot of money to put this stuff together, and we're making pennies on it. So it's not 
But but only thing fair is a fair fair is where they judge pigs. So <laughs> you can't worry about fair. You just gotta be keep grinding it out and put and doing try to do good work and it'll the the money will come the the uh because it's not about money and having a lot of it. It's being able to make a living off of what you do. And that's what, and that's what a lot of artists are struggling. They're spending a lot of money to make these records and do this videos and all this stuff. And the, and the return isn't that that great on these platforms. They got to do a better job of of, of compensating the artists. That's well, the, I, being that you said that, so there's a lot of like the digital download, and people are now using that term. I don't own the rights to this music, mm -hmm. and which really I hear don't necessarily protect you when you you're utilizing someone's music for. You know, like if I were using your music for my podcast or something else, yeah. but it, but artists aren't getting that money for people or he reusing the music. Right. And so, you know, how do you feel about that? Well, there's a thing called sync sync licensing. Now, if you know, if you go on Instagram and you uh, Facebook and you posting your stories, you can pull up other people's music and use it in your clips or your pictures. That's called sync licensing. What that does is for every time somebody uses my song and their story or whatnot there's a you get pennies on it but it still adds up but that's a sinking thing there are options for monetizing your song if people want to use them in certain things but for the most part uh if there is a lot of that going around but the internet the digital age like youtube a lot of those platforms are getting really smart about being able to stream uh, hear it hear the song being recognized and being played they, they'll they'll flag it Mm -hmm. And they're doing a better job of that, but like I said, the art. But it's not. For, they're not doing that for for us as artists right. they for themselves, so they can get the right. money. Right. That was that was my concern. Is yeah, that I, I hear a lot of that, and it's as if they're if people can't use it or pay for it, then you know you would think that why, if I could use artist music and just say would you, would you want to pay for the rights to reuse that. Well, then I should have the option to pay for it, and it goes to the to the artist. Exactly. Um, they're just singling it out. Right, and 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 artists can take back their control of that if they, but they, but if you're using these platforms, you're actually putting yourself in in, in a position. I mean, you see, we, we're cattle in America. A lot of times, we're we're easily kind of shuffled to a certain thing to do. Everybody's running over to Facebook. Everybody's going over to Instagram. Everybody's doing YouTube, and Spotify mm -hmm. is the big platform. So if everybody's cattling everybody to if people are cattling people to those platforms, you start saying, "Hey, come to my website and buy my music. Come to my website and look at my videos." People are unless you got a big name and a big brand, and even big name people don't get a lot of website visits. People got to get back to the official website because that's how most artists independently are going to monetize their product. Because you're not going to get major money if you're going through all these other platforms. You're just another right. right. You're not even treated with a lot of dignity. I'm just keeping it real. I don't. I don't think it's. Uh, uh, I don't think it's good. I don't think it's great for music. I think it's. I think it, we're, we're in a capitalistic society where greed goes on, and we gotta. We gotta be able to own that and, and, and recognize that as, as a truth. As a, as a truth. And so, I'm learning. I'm, I'm in the process of monetizing my website, uh, my own uh, uh, merchandising store. I want to be able to put my music up there where people can download directly or stream it directly. It's a lot of moves I'm making. But in the meantime, I'm using the platforms that, that are there. So I heard I, I heard that I years ago I watched an interview about this, but then I recently had some guests on the show and one where uh, Spree from Arrested Development, he had touched a little bit on, and, and this is just in the industry of, uh, I don't know if you would say black or black artists or just the hip hop rap genre, mm -hmm. that the, the controlling people in the industry intentionally put out for and, and when it comes to rap or i don't i don't i know i don't know that the, the right word but would prefer to put out certain rap music than steering away more of r b music because they wanted the and they just wanted to sell what was kind of just that ghetto cussing booty shaking because <laughs> that's what we wanted to and that's the only way i can put it to sell i understand so, putting out and so they intentionally were trying to only put out on the market all this all this rap music the old um the old back into the ice cube days um you know that kind of stuff less s krs one stuff like that okay. and so is, is any of that do you do, does that sound familiar to you where that was a challenge in the industry oh yes yes ma'am it's, it's funny you mentioned that because that's exactly 
what they what the powers that be in that are mainstream in the industry of this music want. Listen, everything's connected to racism in this country. Why would music, the music industry, be any different? Everything. If we think about the systemic racism in America, it comes. It's in all all uh, industries from entertainment. Uh, Fortune 500 companies, corp- corporate America, uh, anything, medical, the healthcare industry, that's all racism is, is pre- prevalent in all of those industries and, and beyond. So why would the music business be any different in terms of, in terms of a systemic uh, motive or intention from white America? They really want to keep us vegetable. So as long as we talk about nothing in our music, because we know, because we've got to think music sues the savage beast and music the universal aspect of music touches people's lives in every way. So if we put out a bunch of negativity, a woe is me, uh, sexually driven type charged in- information, are you going to feed into that as the narrative of how life's supposed to be? Because I'll go back to Anita Baker, Luther Vandross, Freddie Jackson, some of those people, they inspired me to get through some tough times in my life growing up as a young kid, paying my dues as a, as a, as a young man. Uh, the, the, uh, what's the passage of life, so to speak? You know what I'm saying? So now, what's the passage of life for young black women and men these days, or just black, just people in general that listen to certain styles of music, if the music's not a reflection of the times? And I don't mean negative reflection of the time. Marvin Gaye wrote What's Going On because and talked about all the stuff that was going on at the time. These records ain't talking about nothing that's going on in the world. We ain't talking about the, the, the disparity in, in economic, social economic disadvantages and education. Uh, Everything, you know what I'm saying? Relationships, it's all that. It's just crazy. So yeah, that is exactly what they do. And rhythm and blues music has become irrelevant. And a lot of that is because the artist got away from doing what we're supposed to do. That's why I'm not going to abort. My mantra now is I will not abort the R&B mission. So my goal is to never stop presenting R&B, rhythm and blues to people anymore. I'm, I am I was guilty of chasing pop money, trying to sing pop records to, to try to, because that's what we thought we had to do to be relevant as black artists and, art and as, as urban and R&B and all that stuff. So I focus on making rhythm and blues. I'm trying to put it right back in your face. I don't care if you don't like it or I don't care if it's not the norm. It is going to be something you're going to hear from St. James and, and my team from this point forward. R&B music is my mantra. I will not abort the R&B mission. I will not give up on the sound. Just because everybody else doing what they want to do and everything was was popular, I'm going to do what, what feels good and what's right. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because um, I see many artists, they keep, many artists, they re, I, how do you say, um, they rebrand themselves depending on what is selling right now. Right. And, and, or, and, and then, that's one question of what you, how you feel about that. It means they're not staying true to the brand. So there, there's two specific artists. I'm not going to say who they are because I want to get mad at me that I really, really, really love. And then I saw everything just changed. So now I'm not interested anymore. Mm-hmm. So, um, but then th- my question is, you have a lot of artists when I was in my twenties and they were doing some ratchet, whatever stuff out there. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they get older and they're looking at the artists who was doing all the ratchet stuff back then and and saying, well, they're what they're doing for our black youth, our black community, you know, because they're they're, you know, they got the ass all out. Or right. but I'm, you know, and I look back and say, but you were the same artist doing the same stuff, but right. had the, maybe it was a different method, but you still had the booty shaking girls, you know, mm-hmm. how naked, you have the cussing, you have the, you know, I'm gonna cap them in the ass. And that's what you're saying to the artist today. So, because, and everybody has an opportunity to change, but how do you feel about that? Because that means you're still not staying true to the music, what you, what you put out there. I, I, think, I, think, I think hypocrisy is the real disease in humanity. I've always felt that way, hypocrisy. The very thing you don't want someone doing to you, you're actually doing yourself anyway. So, so and, and I think as you get older, you tend to forget what you were doing before, before you got older. <laughs> become uh, cranky and, uh, you know, just, <laughs> you know, self-righteousness is a real challenge as you start, once you clean up your act and you finally figure out some things, you can't go back and start turning your nose up and pointing your finger at people that do it now. 
you used to do it. But it's it's hypocrisy, sis. It's, it's what's going on. So that's a that's a real big issue in in our in our world in our society. Hypocrisy, and so I really focus on trying not to be a hypocritical person. But you're not going to always get that right because sometimes we're pre precon, we're preconditioned. We're, we're conditioned in certain behaviors and certain projection of behaviors, and we don't even realize we're actually projecting certain things in our day to day actions because we haven't even taken a look inside to. to, to to look at ourselves and be transparent and accountable. And that's the biggest issue. So yeah, in music, it's not, it's going to happen. Everybody thinks they know what's hot, what's right, what's, what you should do. I just think you got to, I just tell people, if I'm not your cup of tea, then keep it moving. I'm not trying to be loved by the world, only the people that love what I do. And if you focus on staying true to your to what you do and people that love what you do will support you. If we get ahead of ourselves and try to go too, 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 too massive or get too mainstream or worry about the, the whole world, you, you're not going to get nowhere, man. You can't, the journey of a, th- of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And to me, in the end of the day, it's doing what you love, doing, staying consistent with that. Sometimes people will be doing too much in, of, of everything and doing nothing at all. I agree. Well, I, I want to thank you for being on the show. We're about time's up. I know it's been a little over, but oh. this was, it was a really good show. Um, yeah. I really enjoy you being on the show. And so for everybody who has been listening or watching or chiming in, I've seen some of you on the um, podcast. Thank you. But I want to make sure that you guys make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just go to our website, entrepreneurlifeshow.com. You can watch the interview live on the replay as as often as you want. You can check out um, St. James' website, which is in the chat, but he's going to share it again. And we're definitely going to have it on the website on the youtube and within the chat until next time so if you don't mind one more time just sharing where everybody can connect with you i'd appreciate it all right thank you so much uh saint james s-a-i-n-t-j-a-i-m-z saint james.com and all digital platforms all over social media google me i heard trending so uh <laughs> let's get this music man i really want y'all to fall in love with rb again learn to rekindle your relationship with rhythm and blues rhythm is the beat and blues is a story. So the song has to have a beat and a damn show better tell a story. Let's get it. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And we will see you guys next time. Until you see um, next Thursday on Entrepreneur Live Show. Bye, everybody. Thanks for Good. watching and listening. Thank you.